to the Lord be the glory, great things he has done unto the Lord. Be the glory, great things he has done unto the Lord. Be the glory, great things he has done unto the Lord. Be the glory, great things he has done. Great things he has done. Great things he will do today unto the Lord. Be the glory, great things he has done. Great things he has done. Marvelous things. He will do today unto the Lord. Be the glory, great things He has done. Great things He has done. Miraculous things He will do today unto the Lord. Be the glory, great things He has done. Oh Lord. My God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. How excellent is your name. Oh Lord, oh Lord, my Redeemer, how excellent is your name.
Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We praise you. We praise you for your presence. We praise you for your personality. We praise you for your power. We praise you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let the most thankful person here shout the loudest hallelujah. If you are thankful to be in the sanctuary of the most high God, shout one more loud hallelujah. Only one person will have made it possible for us to be celebrating the 10th anniversary and to be here today. That one person is no other one than the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Ancient of Days. His name is Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. Celebrate him with a loud clap of him. God bless you. Please, kindly be seated. Thank you. House of Praise, Christian Center, Birmingham, I want to say a big, big thank you to the Almighty God for His church, for our lives. And I say big congratulations to Pastor Tayo, Pastor Moyo Olotu. Congratulations indeed. And let's celebrate the leadership of the church. We thank God for your obedience. You could have said no when God said, I need a man to do this. But thank God you said yes. And I assure you and your beloved wife and children, you will never, never regret saying yes to God. God has been faithful to us, hasn't he? So I congratulate the entire members of the leadership team of the great church, House of Praise. I want to thank this set man that God also used to start it all, Pastor Eboda. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. You will see many, many spiritual children from all over the world in the name of Jesus. I celebrate all our beloved pastors that are here today and pastors that will still be coming. You're all doing a great work. You will never come down in Jesus' name. Faithful workers and members of us of praise, uh, I celebrate you. Congratulations. Amen. Glory be to God. You have a fantastic work team, and that's why the work continues to blossom. So I celebrate all our workers. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The Bible says, as his name is, so he is. Amen. So I'm not surprised at all that you have a wonderful praise team because your name is House of Praise. So as his name is, as your name is, so you are. Let's celebrate the excellent praise team. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And I could see Psalm 133 at play. I could see that the oil upon the praise team was also flowing from the leadership. Amen. Pastor Moyo is a great worshiper. Hallelujah. Amen. And you can see her husband is filled with the Holy Spirit. May this oil upon you all remain ever fresh in Jesus' name. Love and greetings from the most beautiful woman in the whole world. That's my beloved wife, Pastor Bola. Amen. Praise God. Now, when I go to a few places to walk and share the word of God, I've been told that whenever I mention my wife and people celebrate her very well, they've told me that I do preach well when those times happen. So I suspect that if you clap for my wife very well, I will preach well. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the month of May. It's the month of grace. Never forget the charge that our beloved pastor gave us. So please be thirsty, be ready, be expectant, and also be specific. 
because there is no coincidence in the spirit realm. There is only God incidence in life. So I believe you are not here by coincidence. I'm not here either by coincidence. The Almighty God had it all planned from the foundation of times. And so for me also, I believe that this is a unique season. And I'm leaving this place with unique blessings from the Lord. It's a special day. It's a day of the release of the gift of heaven. Amen. So are you ready to receive what God will release? Because he will release great things. Hallelujah. Not because of any man standing here to preach, but because of the Lord whom we serve. Amen. All good and great gifts come from whom? From him and him alone. It's got nothing to do with me. I'm just a vessel and a messenger. And uh, like I said, there is no coincidence. So I believe it's not also a coincidence that this is the first parish outside of my local church, Victory House, that I'm preaching at since I uh, began to serve uh, in the new assignment that I have. So this is very important and significant to me also, and I believe it should be to you, because God has a definite plan and purpose for this day in our life. May is the fifth month. Hallelujah. It's also the month of my birth. Glory be to God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I was born 13th of May. Uh, it's also the month of the birth of our first miracle child, Toby. Toby turned 22 yesterday, which is the 22 of the 22. Hallelujah. And Toby is serving with us very actively in ministry right now to the glory of God. Uh, we'll tell the story for another day. So, this is our 10th anniversary. Five is a number of grace. We are in the month of grace. Ten is the number of double grace. Double grace. Double grace. Pastor Lutu referred to the story of Elijah and Elijah. For somebody here, are you ready for double portion? Hey, your amen is standing on no leg at all. So God is going to give somebody a 10th anniversary gift. Is that person you? So I'm going to ask you to pray in a minute. Job 42, 10 and 11. Job 42, 10 and 11 from the message translation. Listen carefully, the message translation. It says, after Job had interceded for his friends, God restored his fortune and then doubled it. God restored his fortune. He didn't stop there. What did he do? He doubled it. For everything, God will help you to recover. To regain, to be restored back to you, is going to double them in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, because I want you to pray with passion, I want you to pray with faith, I want you to pray with understanding, I want to share with you very briefly how this works in practical terms. How your fortune can be restored and then God doubles it. And I will illustrate that with a testimony because. The Bible says that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Whatever I tells you by way of testimony is what Jesus has done. And if he has done it for somebody, it becomes a prophecy for you that you are going to be next in line to testify. Do I hear amen to that? Now, this story happened to my brother-in-law not too long ago. My brother-in-law, one of them lives in Manchester. He's been out of job for eight months before COVID struck. In March of last year. Now, in his last job, he used to travel about five to six hours from home to his place of work. So, what happened was that he stayed at a bed and breakfast place where in the city where he was working, and then he would normally come to his family every weekend. Then, COVID came in March. After a few weeks into the COVID season, my brother in law called me and said, Pastor, I'm in deep trouble. I said, What happened? He said, well, there was no COVID. I had been out of job for eight months. My last contract stopped and ended. Now there is COVID. There is still no job. My wife and I and four children with a new one, uh, three children with a new one to be born in a few weeks' time. They've been living on credit cards. So we prayed. And I said, be assured, all is going to be well. You are not going to suffer the famine of COVID and it will not even come near you. We prayed, we believed God. A few weeks after, 
that and COVID was still very much raging. This must be about end of April into May, going to a year now. In one day, in one day, something is going to happen to you in one day in this place. And it will become a point of testimony forever. In the name of Jesus. In one day, my young brother-in-law got two calls from two major companies, offering him two contracts. In one day, he started two contracts. Each of the contracts paid him double of what he used to earn in his last contract. Now, this is what will blow your mind. For both contracts, he will not need to leave the comfort of his living room. Not even to travel five minutes from his living room, not to talk of five hours from the city of Manchester. He began to execute both contracts right from his living room and each of them paid double of what the last contract used to pay him. Now listen to this. He's been managing up until that time in a rented two-bedroom apartment with his wife and four children because a new baby had not just had come now. February this year, less, just a couple of months ago, he called me giving testimony and giving thanks to God and he said, Pastor, this is incredible. How God restores fortune and then double fortune that had been lost. He said, Pastor, sir, I have not only paid off all our credit card debts, God helped us to raise and to save and have 50,000 pounds deposit, cash, cash to pay for their new bought property a four bedroom house in Manchester 50,000 pounds cash that they did not have to borrow all that happened during the pandemic hallelujah when God restored the fortune of Job he did something he doubled it rise up on your feet if that is for you in this season the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Lift up your voices with mine. Say, my father, my father. Whatever I have lost to the camp of the enemy this year, restore my fortune and then double it in the name of Jesus. Restore my joy and double it. Restore my peace and double it. Restore my rest and double it. Restore my fortune my finances, my joy, my breakthrough. Restore, restore, restore. Whatever I've lost, restore my health, the health of my family members. Restore the congregation. Restore your church, oh God. Restore the anointing, oh God. Restore the prayer life, the prayer vivency, oh God. Restore the presence of the Holy Ghost. Whatever we have lost to the camp of the enemy, this year, this year, on this day of release from heaven, on this day of outpouring from heaven, on this day of Pentecost, oh Lord my God, restore our fortune and then double it. Restore my fortune, spiritual fortune, physical fortune, financial fortune, emotional fortune, oh God, Parental fortune, oh God. Family fortune, oh God. Le preneke supreke Restore my fortune, oh God. And then double it. Restore the fortune of that family. Restore the fortune of that ministry. Restore the fortune of that church. Restore the fortune of that brother, of that sister. Restore, restore. And then double it, oh God. Remoko toli brakasata. Le brashantalava. Le supreneke teya. La brone Cotoria Macuri Macashata, the Supre Neketea, Yege de Bolobolobolobolicataya. Not only will you pass that examination, you will pass it with flying colors, you will pass it with open doors, open doors to double promotion, open door to leaping and galloping exploits, leaping and galloping progress. Malika de Gedea, every soul that the church had lost to the camp of the enemy, restore that soul back to the church. And double the soul. Double, 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 double. Malikateya. If your church had lost five members, God will.
will restore those five members that were lost and God will double the number. God will double the number. Ten will be added. Make kotoya. Ne prosotoli kataya. Rashata. Ni ke kotoli brakasataya. Holy Ghost, come down. Come down. Come down. Let there be an outpouring of your spirit and your power for double restoration. Regezo preketeya. Double portion of the anointing of the Holy Ghost came upon Elisha in one day. Oh Lord, my God, let this day be a day of double, 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 double. Five is a number of grace. Ten is a number of double grace, of double grace, double restoration, double fortune. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let your amen sound like thunder. It is done. I said it is done. Put your hands together for Jesus if you believe. Please be seated. The next time I'm going to preach your testimony is the next I'm going to share. All right. Psalm 102 verse 13. Psalm 102 verse 13. We're going to the world a few more for a few more minutes and we pray. Psalm 102 verse 13. I'm reading from the New King James Version, please. New King James Version. Thank you. God bless you, multimedia. Join me to read that passage together. One to go. You will arise. And have mercy on Lake Sanusi. <laughs> All right, let's start again. Hallelujah. One to go. You will arise and have mercy on Zion. For the time to favor her, yes, the set time has come. The topic of my message this morning is It is my set time. Say it to yourself if you believe. Holy Spirit, breathe upon your words. Confirm the preaching and teaching of your words for the next few minutes with signs and wonders. Take all the glory, my Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It is my set time. In life, there is a set time for you. Biblically, the set time is called the Kairos time. There are two different times of life. The Kairos and the Kronos. I don't have the time to go into the full details. But the set time is what is called in the Greek word, the Kairos time. That passage that we read, Psalm 102, 13, the set time that has come there is referred to as the Kairos time or the opportune time of life. For example, I believe today, the day of Pentecost is a Kairos time. It's not a time when everything happens ordinarily. The Kairos time is a time of life when a destiny shaping, a destiny recovery, a destiny fulfilling, and a destiny defining event takes place. On the day of Pentecost, a destiny defining event took place in the life of the church. It can happen to individuals. It can happen to families. It can happen to cities. It can happen to a congregation. It can happen to nations. Your set time from the text that we read is also called the time of Babel. Now when the time, when that time shows up, when the set time shows up, what happens is that heaven and earth begin to cooperate to help you redeem, to help you regain, to help you recover your lost time, your lost fortunes, your lost opportunities and your lost years. Hallelujah. For example, by way of illustration, when you set your alarm clock to a particular time, don't forget the scripture says, thou shall arise and have mercy on Lake Sanusi. I hope you saw Lake Sanusi in the scripture. For the time to be for him, yes, the what? The what? The set time has come. Now, when you set your alarm clock to a particular time, when that time clicks, what happens? Yeah. 
When you set your alarm clock to a particular time, when that time clicks, what happens? Whether on your Android or on the classical alarm clock like the one I'm holding here, which my children may not be very familiar with, my daughters and sons here. But I used this a lot when I was studying like you. We didn't have those beautiful things in your hand in those days, you know. But this was great then too. Isn't it? Brothers and sisters who know this. You set it. And when that time comes, what happens? It begins to rain. It begins to sound. Now, if it's a wake-up alarm that you said, when it begins to ring, what do you do? You wake up. And when you wake up, what do you do? You arise. You arise. Thou shall arise and have mercy on Lake Sanusi for the time to be for him. Yes, the, the set time. The set time. The set time. The set time. We have set it. At the set. Go on ring local. And I've come to declare that today is the day of ringing for you. Thou shall arise. Because the wake up alarm is ringing. And when the rising takes place, heaven rises. The heart rises. They cooperate together to favor you. So as the alarm is sounding, some rising up is also taking place. Both in the spirit realm and in the physical realm. As the set time came on the day of Pentecost, rising began to take place. The promise of God was set into performance. Before that day, everyone was at rest, was sleeping. But the moment the set time came on the day of Pentecost, performance became inevitable. And the heart was also ready to receive. As some people are ready to receive here today, even as pastor gave us the charge. I perceive in my spirit that the season of performance has come for some people. And that which you have been expectant of for many, many years, there shall be performance like it was on the day of Pentecost. It's called the set time of favor. Thou shalt arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time of favor. Now look at this scripture quickly. Psalm 5 verse 12. For you, O Lord, Psalm 5 verse 12. For you, O Lord, we bless the righteous with favor. You will surround him as with a shield, with favor, you will bless the righteous, and with favor, you will surround him as with a shield. Listen to this God's favor is always with us, it's always with any child of God. Thou, Lord, we bless the righteous. The righteous is the child of God, made right by the blood of the Lamb. And you will surround him with favor. So you are already surrounded with favor, but there are set times. When God's favor manifests to turn your story to glory. Already surrounded with it. But there are set times of activation. That's why he when, when said, the set time to favor has come. The set time for favor to go to work on behalf of somebody here. On behalf of us of praise, Bamiya. On behalf of every ministry represented here. On behalf of the church in the United Kingdom. The set time for favor to go into activation and bring forth the blessings consequential to the activation of favor. That set time has come. When the time comes. When the set time comes, when the alarm bell of the set time begins to ring, what happens? Maybe I will be able to share a couple with us of what takes place when God's favor is released at the set time. Number one, God's favor catapults you from the background to the foreground or forefront, as you say, when the set time comes. A number last becomes a number one. Some things are just unstoppable at the set time. 
Just as it was impossible to stop House of Praise Birmingham from buying this property at the set time. When the set time came, not even the restrictive covenant over this property could restrict him. That which you are trying to remember. You are not a lawyer, so I'm a lawyer. A better place to remember it. It's called restrictive covenant. That covenant had been there. I don't know how old the building is. It could be 100 years. It could be 150 years. But the restrictive covenant had been there that you can never use this property for nothing else other than a church. And on the day when the set time came for no other entity, no other institution, other, the other institution must have tried to buy this place. But when the set time came, not even the restrictive covenant who restrict the church of the living God from possessing it in the name of Jesus. A restrictive covenant is like a barrier. A restrictive covenant is, a, is like an embargo. A restrictive covenant is a limitation. It says you can't do this, you can't do that. But I perceive in my spirit because it is your set time. Every embargo is lifted. Whatever has kept you in the wilderness, whatever has kept you in the cocoon, whatever has kept you in the background is hereby lifted for you to show up, for you to come to the forefront in the name of Jesus. In 1 Samuel 16, 11, 1 Samuel 16, 11, David was in the wilderness. But when the set time of vapor came from him, the prophet said, we will not sit down till he comes. I perceive that in the name of Jesus Christ, for somebody here, no door of breakthrough will close until you have entered. I said until you have entered. When is your set time? It's impossible to look down on you anymore. In fact, those who had looked down on you begin to look up unto you. That was what happened to Jephthah. When it is the set time, what does favor do for you? Number two, the scarcely noticeable becomes the center of attraction. Never forget the first point. The one that had been in the background comes to the forefront. When the set time of favor comes. Number two, the scarcely noticeable becomes the center of attraction. Nobody notices you, nobody reckons with you, but at your set time, it's impossible to ignore you. From now on, in this neighborhood, in this city, it will be impossible to ignore the redeemed Christian church of God. Esther 2, 15 to 17. Esther 2, 15 to 17. When the turn of Esther came, the Bible said the turn of Esther came. And I hope you understand and agree with me, brethren, that turn comes in life at specific time. If you are on the queue of life, maybe at the post office, you are on the queue. In the bank, you are on the queue. At some point, they say it is now your turn. And when it is your turn, attention focuses on you. From today, in the name of Jesus, I've come to declare, it is your turn. The Bible says, when that turn came for Esther to go in, what happened? It was impossible to ignore her. A set time of favor came and everybody turned to her. I decree that because it is your set time, everybody and everything will begin to turn to you. As everybody and everything will begin to turn to you in the name of Jesus Christ. At the same time, number three, a loaded man or woman suddenly becomes needed. A loaded man or woman suddenly becomes needed. Before Christ departed this earthly world, he had breathed the Holy Ghost. He breathed the Holy Ghost into the disciples. But they still went into the cocoon. They still went into the dark. Nobody needed them. But the sad time came on the day of Pentecost. By the time the Holy Ghost and Pari came upon them, they were already loaded with the Holy Ghost. But when the sad time came, the loaded became the needed. From today, you that has been loaded by God over the last 10 years through the preaching of the man of God and all those God had been using, it is time for you to be needed all over the world. Can I hear it loudly? Amen. amen. In 1 Samuel 16, 18 to 19, 1 Samuel 16, 18 to 19, David was already loaded, loaded with the anointing. The oil had been poured upon him, and yet his father still sent him back to the wilderness. Come on, the oil upon your life is too much to dwell in the wilderness. 
It's too much to remain in the desert. Something about that oil upon David kept saying that you are not in the right place. You need to relocate in order to locate your divine allocation. Because your set time had come already. And when that alarm and the ringing of the set time will not stop, somebody was in the palace. He became a campaign manager for David that was in the desert, in the wilderness. Why? Because the loaded man became needed. It was a set time. On this day of Pentecost, just as the oil came upon David, and the Bible says that the Spirit of God was upon him from that day day forward and from that day forward it became impossible for him to be ignored even right there far away in Buckingham Palace God raised a campaign manager for him that eventually led to his coming out of the wilderness in the same vein as the outpouring takes place on the day of Pentecost which is a set time a set day Today, in the name that is above all other names, from the east, the south, the west, and the north, God will raise destiny helpers for you. I said God will raise destiny helpers for you. Few days to the end of this month, before this month is over, I stand on this altar to testify unusual help from unexpected quarters, uncommon help from unexpected, unbelievable quarter. We locate at least 17 people that are listening to me. If you are one of them, say, Father, say, My Father, say, My Father, it is my set time, it is my set time. Command unusual help. Uncommon air from uncommon quarters, from unexpected quarters to locate my destiny in the name of Jesus. Be seated. You are coming out of the desert. When it is your set time, your gift can no longer be ignored. The Bible said the gift in a man makes room for him, but it is the ringing of the set time alarm of favor that says, now it is time to come in. Your gift may make room for you and yet the door of the room may not be open. <laughs> you have potential but there is no platform. It is the alarm bell of the set time that creates the platform for you. David had been loaded with that gift all along but it was not needed anywhere. But when the Holy Ghost came upon him and it was his sad time, the gift that he had always carried that had made room for him potentially, the doors to those rooms begin to open. They can invite you to a place but they still need to open the door for you before you can enter. Under the anointing of the Holy Ghost today in the name of Jesus Christ, every door that you have been knocking, the doors of marriages, the doors of settlement, the doors of the fruit of the womb, the doors of academic breakthrough, the doors of possessing a new building for your church, possessing and buying a house for yourself, the doors of marriages for your children, for yourself, for your loved one. The doors of settling all indebtedness and becoming debt free and financially independent. Before the middle of this year, those doors will open for you. You will be ushered in. You will be ushered in. It is your set time. Your gift will no longer be dormant. Your gift will come to the forefront. Your gift will come to expression. People will desire your gift. They will desire your qualification. They will desire your skill. They will desire your potential. Your gift will come into global expression. You will no longer remain a local champion. You are coming into global expression as a global icon. In the name of Jesus, every glory that heaven uploaded into your destiny, they are set for explosive global announcement. You shall be globally announced in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Isaac was loaded with the gift and the grace to dig well. He kept digging and he kept meeting obstacles and oppositions. But when the sad time of favor came, his abundance, his enlightenment, his fruitfulness was unstoppable. In Genesis 26, 22, Genesis 26, 22, says, and he moved from there and dug another well and they did not quarrel over it. 
the quarrel is over. The contention is over. I say the adversaries, they will stop being adversaries to you. Did we not say we will enter into arrest this year? First Kings 5, 4. Now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side. No more adversary, nor evil occurrence. One of the greatest adversaries of mankind in the last one year or so has been coronavirus. But in the name of Jesus, under the unction of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost, all over the world, I decree, coronavirus shall become corona vanish. In the name of Jesus. So Isaac did what? He called his name Rehoboth. Because he said, for now. For now. Somebody say, for now. He said, the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land. For now. For now. Now is an expression of time, isn't it? Now. If I say, what is the time now? Now is an expression of time. A set time. Isaac said, for now, God has made room for us. I decree that what I call your own for now has come. Your for now of turn around has come. Because for now, you shall be fruitful in this nation. For now, you shall be healed. For now, you shall hear the good of the land. For now, you shall be married in the land. For now, no more rejection. For now, no more desolation. For now, no more fear. For now, rooms are being made for you, and you shall be abundantly fruitful. I give us one more because of our time. I need to close now. At your set time of favor, rules are suspended. Protocols are broken. What used to be abnormal becomes normal. The supernatural takes over. In Genesis 18, 13 to 14, when they told, when, the, when, when God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit visited Abraham and his wife, and they told Sarah that, you know, there's nothing too hard for God to do at the appointed time. Somebody say appointed time. Somebody say set time. Set time. It started from Genesis. At the set time, at the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. The Bible says that Sarah began to laugh. He began to laugh. She began to laugh. She began to laugh. Forgetting that when it is the set time, protocols are broken. When it is set time, custom, tradition, usages, and all that, the things that disqualify people in life, God Almighty begin to lift all the embargoes on things at the appointed time. Impossibility becomes possible. Because Luke 137, with our God, nothing shall be impossible. I will never forget that day we were praying in church for those believing God for the fruit of the womb. We are having a non shall be barren program. And we asked people to come forward to be prayed for or those who wanted to stand in the gap. And we gave a clear instruction. If it's for you, put your hands on your womb. We will pray for you. And my wife will lay hands on, 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 on your womb while I lay hands on your heads. But if you are believing God for somebody, please don't put your hand on your womb. Just, you know... <laughs> Just lift up your hands. And people came and we were praying. Unbeknown to us, there was a 65-year-old woman who came to stand in the gap for her 60-year-old cousin who had been believing God for the fruit of the womb. Fortunately and unfortunately, she put her hands on her womb. And so we prayed. And about two months later, I got a call. They said somebody wanted to speak to me. I picked the call. And apparently it was this 65-year-old woman on the other end. And she said, Pastor Leke, I'm in trouble. I said, Holy Ghost, take care of the trouble now. He said, Pastor Leke, I'm not joking. I said, I know you are not joking. That's why I also cried to the Holy Ghost. I said, all right, what's the trouble? She said it three more times. I'm in trouble. I said, what is the trouble? He said, Pastor, you don't even want to hear it. I said, so why did you call me then? <laughs> So I persuaded her to tell me what the fire on the mountain was so that we can ask the Holy Ghost to quench it. She said, Pastor Licky, remember that program, sir? I actually came forward. I said, I saw somebody that looked like you on that day. But unfortunately, I put my hands on my womb. But I was standing in gap for my cousin. I said, so what happened? He said, Pastor Licky, you don't want to hear it. I said, ah. 
I said, mommy, tell us what. She's a grandmother of many grandchildren at that time and up to now. I said, tell us what happened. He said, I'm pregnant. I said, mommy, you are still firing. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. I said, so daddy is still firing. Sorry, I just spoke in tongues. You don't understand. That. You don't need to understand that. He said, Pastor Lekedi, this is not a joking matter. I can't say it to anybody. He said, what sin did I commit? I said, no one sin. It is for the glory of the Lord to be established. He said, Pastor Lekedi, I can't do this. I said, do what? He said, it's not your doing. It's the Lord's doing. Somebody said, this is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. She entered into a set time. God bypassed the procedure. Suspended every rule and every regulation. And did what no man can do. She had been in menopause for at least eight years. Prior to that time. She had already been in menopause. And she became pregnant. I assured her to give the glory to God. And carry the pregnancy to town. So that I can be, become a testimony. He said, how about my cousin that I stood in the gap for? I said, don't worry. God is not unrighteous to forget the labor of your love. If he has done it for you that didn't expect it, he will do it for your cousin. A year later, our cousin was returning to Nigeria from abroad. Developed some symptoms, got back to Nigeria, went to the hospital. And she, they told her that she was pregnant. She was 60 years old. It became national headlines in the news in Nigeria. One or two of you might remember that season. She also gave her. God bypassed the procedure. Suspended the rules. And gave the miracle. Because it was the set time. Rise up on your feet. I don't know the protocols that has been working against you, but when it is your set time, all rules and protocols, they become suspended. How can I enter or command my set time? Many things to share with you, but within the brevity of time that I must comply with, let me give you the most important point in this respect. To enter into your set time of labor, which I believe is now. Second Chronicle 27, 6. Second Chronicle 27, 6. The Bible says, so Jotam became mighty because he prepared his ways before the Lord is God. He didn't become mighty suddenly, coincidentally. He did not become mighty just because it was set time, it set time alone. He also did something. Amen. The grace of God has been given to us through faith in Christ Jesus. The grace of God has been given to us to command our set time, to bring forth our appointed time, but it is through faith in Christ Jesus that you appropriate the grace of the number 10 double blessing. Through faith. Jotam prepared himself, his ways before the Lord is God. And the result was that he became mighty. He became mighty. There is nothing God cannot do. And he said to do for you what no man can do. But the number one requirement is prepare your way before the Lord, your maker. What does it mean to prepare your way? You must surrender completely to Jesus and make him your Lord and your Savior. My wife and I were barren for many years. We had no child. We tried every means except trying God and preparing our ways before God. And it was utter failure. And eventually, the almighty God arrested our hearts. He saved our souls from destruction. My wife and I came to England not to plant a church or pastor any parish. We came to England for fertility treatment. 26 years ago. 
You see, the moment you prepare your way before your maker and begin to please him, everything has no choice but to begin to work together for your good, including all the problems and the challenges you've ever had in life. Because God has seen the end right from the beginning. After three years of fertility treatment in England, one of the best gynecologists in England, Professor Savas of the Bridge Fertility Clinic in those days, called my wife and I to his office and he said, there is no more known medical treatment that we can still administer on both of you. You just cannot be pregnant. So we are closing your file. But we will keep your record in our computer. If anything new comes up in the fertility scientific discovery and scientific world, we will invite you. So they brought our file, closed it on that day, and gave it to us. And we went back home. Remember, we came to England for fertility treatment. At that moment, it should be mission over. But when the enemy says to you that mission over, God is saying, I'm beginning a new thing. I'm beginning a new thing. As he began on the day of Pentecost. At this time, our life had been saved by Christ. At this time, we were beginning to see purpose in our problems. At this time, a little parish had started God incidentally. Because they just asked us to use our one room apartment as a house fellowship for a church that we were planning to plant from Nigeria here in England. And they said they would send a pastor. I'm still expecting the pastor to arrive tomorrow. We carry our file. We went back home. We lifted it up and we said, Dr. Jesus, man has closed our file. We hand it over to you. When it is your set time, open the fire. In the meantime, we shall continue to prepare our ways before you and to serve our maker. One and a half years later, with no treatment, my wife began to feel somehow. We went back to Professor Savas without invitation. In the name of Jesus Christ, where you have been rejected before, you are going back there to dominate. You are going back there to rule. You are going back there to showcase the glory of God. Professor Savas welcomed us. And said, why are you here? I don't remember writing to you or asking you to come. He said, we know. But please, will you check my wife? We perceive that what no man can do. Somebody is doing it here. The man didn't know God. At least not our God. Carry out pregnancy tests after some discussion. The nurses came back. Professor Savas looked at my wife and I. He was a Muslim at that time. He said, which gynecologist and hospital have you been consulting since you left me? As if my wife and I rehearsed that, Pastor Yoweli, from, from home. Both of us, heaven is my witness. Both Bola and I looked up at the same time and we said, Dr. Jesus. You know what the prof said? He said, this woman you conceived without treatment. And because when he asked which doctor have you been seeing, he wanted to know the expert that beat him to the game in that field. That was, that was where, what, where he was going when he asked the question. When we said Dr. Jesus, you know what he said? He said, that Dr. Jesus must be the real doctor and the true doctor. Can you tell me more about him? few months later, our firstborn was born. We continue to prepare our ways before our maker, our God, and to serve God. Not long after my wife became pregnant again, 
She was a Bible study when she developed complications and began to bleed. They had to rush her to the hospital. I was in the U.S. in the afternoon, preparing to preach in the evening. You know, afternoon there will be evening here. When I was told that my wife had been rushed to the hospital, I look up and said, Lord, what are we going to do? I'm preaching tonight. My wife is in danger. Heaven smiled at me. Heaven will smile at you today. I had God. He said, continue to do what I've sent you to do. Leave her with me. Some people doubted the first miracle. I wanted to show them that when it is the set time, I can bypass every procedure. That pregnancy had to be evacuated. Our fallopian tubes had to be removed. After the surgery, I was still preaching in America. I said, Lord, what's going on here? God said, continue to do the work and the assignment I sent you to do. Leave it with me. Doctors at Lucia Hospital then, they operated on me. I said, well, thank, thank your God that at least you have a child. Because when there were fallopian tubes, your wife couldn't conceive, conceive for many, many years. Now the tubes are gone. So this thing is as good as over. I laughed. Because I have heard from God. Six months after, my wife became pregnant. When it is your set time, protocols, procedures will be overturned. Overturned, overturned, overturned. Until he that has the right comes to take it. You have come today to take what rightly belongs to you. Not long after, our second son was born. God has a plan even in your problems. God has a plan even in your crisis. How do I enter into God's glorious and greater plan and purpose in my crisis, in my losses, in my affliction, in my tears, for sorrow, weeping me and dear for a night in the morning come and How do I enter into it? You surrender completely to him. Surrender completely to him. Let him be your Lord and your Savior. I was born a Muslim, raised a Muslim, but all those couldn't save me. All those couldn't save Professor Savas. Until he encountered Jesus. Only one prayer I'm going to ask you to pray because I guess I'm still coming back to pray for all of us before the end of the service. But before you pray that prayer, all eyes close. What Christ did to, for me and my wife some years ago, I'm believing God to do it for some people here today. But I want you to take that first step. If you have not given your life to Jesus or made him your Lord and your Savior, or you have at one time, but you've been one leg in, one leg out. You've backslidden. Not your fault. The wind of life is horrible, brethren. The blow of life can be terrible. It can even shake your faith. And you are wondering, is there God there? But I'm telling you today, there is God who, even in our afflictions and our challenges. Anyone here who say, Pastor Lincoln, pray for me. I want to give my life to Jesus completely or I want to rededicate my life to him because I perceive that today is my set time and I don't want the alarm clock to stop ringing until something happens to me. If you are in any of the two categories, just raise up your right hand. I want to pray for you for a moment. God has sent me to you here today. I want to pray for you. You are saying, Pastor Leke, pray for me. I want to rededicate my life to Christ. I want to be a serious Christian, a serious believer. I know some things have been missing in my life. I want to regain and recover everything that has been missing. You can be only one person and God, Jesus Christ, could die and will still die even if you are the only one person that is here on earth. That is the beauty of the cross. God bless you. Anyone saying that today, just raise up your right hand above your head and I will see you wherever you are and I'm going to pray for you. Only you that is saying, Pastor Leke, pray for me. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to rededicate my life to you. Just raise up your hand wherever you are. Raise up your hand. I'm not asking you to come out. I just want you to make it a show of that unto the Lord. God sees you. He sees you. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my brother. It's your day. It's your set day. Your appointed day. Don't let the enemy steal the day from you and the blessing of the day. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, King of glory. 
Blessed be your name. If you are watching us online, God bless you. I recognize you. And you are making that decision also. Just raise up your right hand wherever you are. Today is a day of decision. That's the first step to enter into your new season. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. My Father, my God, Lake Sanusi cannot save a rat. Only Jesus can save. Lord, we come to you today. I join my faith with the faith of this, your sons and your daughters. And I pray, oh God, that you save their souls. I ask for forgiveness. I ask for mercy. Not just for them, but for each and every one of us here today. Let your precious blood cleanse us, wash us, and make us whole. Lord Jesus, come into the hearts of your sons and your daughters that are raising up those hands unto you far and near. I pray that from now on, become their Lord and their Savior. Every file of their lives that the enemy had closed, every file of blessing, file of breakthrough, file of greatness that the enemy had closed. My Father, my God, open those fires today. Begin to attend to those fires today and begin to pour your spirit, your power, your grace and your anointing upon them all. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Lift up your hands, every one of us. I want you to talk to the Lord right now. Say, Father, I thank you for my set time that has come today. Father, everything I need to enter into this set time, let heaven release them upon me now. In the name of Jesus, pray that prayer to the Lord. My Father, my God, I thank you for my set time that has come today. Everything I need to enter into the set time, to plug into the set time, the favor that I need, the grace that I need, the mercy that I need, the anointing that I need, the enablement that I need, the air pass that I need, Malika Kekotoya, everything I need, oh God, to plug into that set time, to enter into that set time, Mali Preketo Yanda, Reke Boko Su Prekete Yanda, oh Lord, my God, ah, pour them to me, pour them, let heaven, let heaven, let heaven download everything I need to enter into my set time, my appointed time of favor, Reproko Sontoli Abakataya, Nekike kuto liketea, rebo shantalia marus katalia, le tuka pragada lige de remokotoya, li jandere mokozobre neketeli prakataya. My father, we thank you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name, we pray. Stretch forth your hands towards the altar. I join my faith with yours on this altar. And I pray for you. Because it is the set time of vivor, and the alarm clock of heaven is ringing loud and clear right now. I pray for you from this altar that in your favor, heaven will arise. In your favor, angels will arise. In your favor, the host of heaven will arise. After the order of Abraham, that God divine visitation from God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in one day, I pray as your own appointed time, set time has come. All the forces of heaven will arise on your behalf. We are rising your favor in the name of Jesus. Thou Lord, you are the possessor of the heaven and the earth. In the same token, as the spiritual governs the physical, I pray for all your children. It is Pentecost Day. On the Pentecost Day, when heaven arose and poured down the spirit, the heart began to yield. The God began to cooperate. The heart began to yield an increase. Psalm 167. The art yielded the increase of 3,000. The art yielded the increase of 5,000. The art yielded the increase of multitude that cannot be counted for a number. Le kuro moko shata. Ibra nazenteya. Because it is your set time. Every increase that the art need to yield. Ibra neketeya. The fruitfulness of the art. The enlightenment of the art. The progress of the art. The growth of the art. The breakthrough of the art. The 
rest of mind of the earth, the restoration of the earth, the total recovery of the earth, the open doors of the earth, the open womb of the earth, everything that the earth needs to yield unto you in order to testify of this day of your set time. I command the earth to begin to yield them. I command the earth to begin to yield them. I command the earth to begin to yield them. In the name of Jesus. Revelation chapter 12, the Bible says, and the heart help the woman, and the heart help the woman. no supracataya. As many of you as who say loud amen, I command the heart to help you. From the north, the heart will help you. From the south, the heart will help you. From the east, the heart will help you. From the west, the heart will help you. The heart will help this church. The heart will help every ministry represented here. The heart will help every family here. The heart will help your marriages. The heart will help your careers. The heart will help your businesses. The heart will help your spiritual life. The heart will help your prayer life. In the name of Jesus. Every law, every custom, every tradition, every procedure <laughs> that has to be bypassed in order for your recovery to take place, in order for your restoration to take place, in order for your rest to take place. Today, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let there be a bypass surgery. In heaven, let there be a bypass surgery. On earth, let there be a bypass surgery. We suspend our protocol. We suspend our rule. We suspend our custom. We suspend our tradition. Whatever has been said to work against you before now, because it is your set time of favor, let them begin to work in your favor. Let them begin to work in your favor. Let them begin to cooperate with you. Let them begin to help you. Let them begin to help you. Men like angels will come to help you. Angels like men will come to help you. In the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we pray. Say a loud amen. Another loud amen. A third loud amen. Shout this with me. Say, Father, it is my set time of favor. It is my set time of favor. It is my set time of favor. Now take your right foot forward. Say, Father, it is my set time of favor. Prophetically, prophetically, I enter into it. I enter into it. I enter into it. Spiritual favor, physical favor, material favor, matrimonial favor, every favor that I deserve, that I desire to fulfill my destiny. I enter. I enter. Go ahead and be come, go ahead. Go ahead and just be saying, I enter. I enter. Any specific favor that you desire as your right foot. Is step, is, is step forward. He stepped forward. Keep on saying, I enter, I enter, I enter into that matrimonial favor, into that settlement favor. I enter, I enter into that financial favor. I enter, I enter. Don't stop, don't stop. Just 60 more seconds. 